I have the carbs off and they're just sitting in there. I put a rag over them. I didn't put them in yet in case, because I want to clean and like I said, clean all my uh, connectors that go together, do that. And I talked about, this is the master cylinder for the clutch and there's a slave cylinder down there in front of the bike. So I got it off and here's why I clean and work like I do on a used bike. You can see the inside of this is so cruddy, nasty. So I'm going to clean that all out and see if it comes apart. And there's probably a, a plunger in there maybe, maybe not, but I'm going to find out. And there's a rod comes out of the clutch that goes right in here. And then it pushes a rod back through and then it's to release your clutch when you pull the handle. And then down below, it's just about as nasty as this. I mean, it's it's really got stuff in it that needs cleaned out. It's the same way down below. So I'll be cleaning them and then see what uh, I have to do to get it all back together, clean it, and then I'll put fresh uh, brake fluid in it again because it uses brake fluid and it's dot four. You have to use dot four in that. I was right. There was a plunger in there. I thought there would be and uh, it came out you can see the spring goes down in there it goes that way and then it simply pushes on the rod for the clutch so that all has to be clean and there's a lot of you can see it almost looks like grease in there because the, I don't think that's maybe ever been done changed and I couldn't get the gasket off so I just took it off I'll make a new one but there was a lot of junk and to get this out this was down in there and I pushed it uh, it was like almost up to here and I pushed it to see if it was a uh, piston and it was it went down in so to get it out you could put it back on the bike and squeeze the handle at the top but you're gonna have to put fluid in it where I'm at now all the fluids out and everything so I simply put my air thing on here, uh, air gun, you know, to blow. I put it in here and I have the uh, bleeder out and cleaned. There was no washer on it, so I'm probably gonna have to, I have some little brass washers or copper washer, copper washer, and it'll squeeze down. I'll put that on it. And uh, I put my finger over that, blew in there, but when you do this, you want to hold this down. Now this comes out like that. You want to hold it down up off of the stand a little bit, but hold it there. When you hit the air, just kind of hit it easy at first, then a little more, you know, a little harder, and it'll pop right out. But you want to have that down, so when this shoots down, it doesn't fly out over there and hit the bike or anything else. So just hold your... Uh, yeah, this is where, the, that's where the bleeder is, and I put it in there. This is where the line comes in, the uh, line with the brake fluid to push it. So I put my thumb over it, put air in there, popped it, and it went down like that and hit, come right apart. No trouble. And you can see down in here all the dirt I got out of it. I mean, there was a lot of dirt in that thing. And underneath that, all them Q-tips, that's the dirt from the uh, other part in the bike. Uh, maybe I can get a shot of that over here. Right in there, if the camera can pick it up that was full of that same stuff it just like turned to grease it's so old and all the stuff i took out of it there and i still got some more cleaning once i get it cleaned it looks like right at the bottom there's a little groove in there and it might be for air to get in there i don't think so but i have to clean it but it's like a little notch right there. So once I clean it, I'll see what it is. But uh, I don't know. But that's where I'm at with that. And that stuff is thick. 
and like I said I doubt if that's ever been cleaned because when I first got it and when the clutch quit on me and I took that apart When I was out with my nephew and the clutch quit and I took that apart, that fluid in there was like a dark tea color and it should be co completely clear like water. So that has been in there for a long time. I knew if the top was, the bottom would be too. This slave cylinder, I got this out as I said, then I put it in there, I took the rubber seal off of it that goes around here to really seal it. I took it off and I put it in there and it stuck. I had to get the air compressor again, hold my thumb over that one, put it in here where the bleeder goes and pop it out. So it's it's binding up and if you can see down in there that should be all just like this right here, just metal. That has like a ridge, not a ridge, you can't really, you can just barely feel it but it's from the rubber and that's been set in so long then I started using it and it freed up some but it that should when I put that in there that should fall down in there it's the rubber seal that holds it now it's not not wobbly or anything you never want to take emery paper or wet and dry sandpaper or anything like that to this but this one you go to Harbor Freight and I've had this and I use it on the cars and everything one and an eighth inch brake cylinder hone now these little stones are real smooth they won't put scratches they'll clean that up they don't take anything off the off the size so you put it in a drill bit or in the drill now when I run this I'm not going to run it full bore I'm just going to go easy with it and I'll start putting those in there and then I'll just take them in and out, in and out, and do that for a while, then check it. So these are spring loaded. You squeeze them together, put them in there, and I get, that's clear down. So I pulled out just a little bit and I squeeze my drill about like that and I start. Maybe a little bit faster. When I had my aircraft, I had to, uh, every 50 hours, we had to uh, decarbon the motors, but every 300 hours, you had to rebuild the motor. And what I would do is I would hone, I had a bigger hone, and I would do my cylinders in the plane. But I can still see it has a little, I can't really feel it now, but it's a, you can kind of see it right there, ridge. And this outer edge is kind of rough, I'll have to clean it up. Now, I'm going to put my drill turning the other way. And the reason is that is so that the stones, they wear on one edge here, well then it'll, you know, wear on the other one a little bit. Most homes you can buy new stones for them and put on. And I'm just moving it back and forth. I barely hit the bottom so I know I got it clear down in there. Wow, that is working. You can see in here that all is almost gone. I need to do a little bit out here. It's it's got a little bit of so put it back in. I come off of it, I gotta go back in.
they keep coming out too far and it just wants to hurry up and spread because this has an angle cut on it where it goes in and it gets on it and it just pushes it off of it. And what I did was, I had shown that gunky stuff down in there. All that was was old brake fluid, and I cleaned it with brake cleaner, and I took Q-tips in there, and I rubbed and rubbed, and I got a lot of it out, but some of it would not come out. So I took acetone, and I would wet the Q-tip and keep it pretty wet, and lay in there and just lay it on a spot that needed clean, and I'd rub and rub back and forth, and it would finally come off. And I just, I think I got all of it. There's a little bit in here where it comes in at. Uh, I might have to do that a little more because I want it all out. So that's that part. Uh, I'll probably do it off camera a little more and make sure that's clean. Now this edge here, you can't do it with the hone and this outside uh, doesn't matter, but clean it. Now what I have is 4-0 steel wool, and that is really fine. It's not going to cut into it, and it'll actually kind of polish it. It won't really leave scratches or anything. And I'm just doing this taper where it goes in, and I'll get that like that. And that cleaned out. That's all it took. Now on this plunger, you can see the blackness on it, uh, probably a little corrosion and that. It, you can feel it a little bit. It's not real smooth, but it's had probably, that's a 1993 bike, and like I said, that may, may have never been done. And I think what I'm going to do is put it in a lathe and turn it because I can turn it and I can hold that steel wool on there and just let that... Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> I forgot I had the compressor on. <laughs> Keep quiet. Uh, do your own damn video. <laughs> so I put this in the lathe and I'll turn it. <laughs> what if everything happens to me? Why don't you try helping me? <laughs> and I'll put it in there and I'll put this on it. But I won't use anything rougher than this because it'll clean it up. Just put it in a lathe, hold it, hold it, and I'll do that. And then I'll come back and show how it fits in there. So after working this, I took the wire brush all around here. I have a little bit more to do to get the old gasket part off and I honed it more in the inside and it's perfectly clean now. I mean, it is really nice. And this part, I put this in the lathe, turned it, and I'd push real hard with the steel wool and I'd put a little bit of chrome cleaner on the steel wool. And that's that 4-0, it's really fine. And I got all the stuff off of it, got it clean real good. So if I've done the part right, it goes in this way with this rubber seal up it goes right in it really fits nice it goes in real easy but if you wiggle it there's no play there should be no play in that that's real close tolerance so now I'll, I'll wire brush some of this in this groove uh, I want to clean the gasket some more but the gasket will go on there, right in here. Uh, then this spring will go right on there. You just twist it and it stays on there. And with the gasket on, it'll go right down in there. Works perfect. Now once the seal's in there, it holds it just a little bit. Uh, and like I said, I'll put brake fluid on this uh, uh, gasket when I go to put it together. You don't want to use uh, like Armor All to wipe this or anything because it might react with the uh, brake uh, fluid. It might, it might not, but you don't want to take a chance. So anything like this I put together with brakes, uh, 
any calipers or anything, I put a little bit of brake fluid on these parts and put it in, put it down in the bottom of this down here. Then when I put it in, it's a little easier than if it's just dry, and it's going to have brake fluid getting on it anyway. So you can put that around there, put it in, set to go. And that's about it for the slave cylinder on the clutch, hydraulic clutch. Uh, up in the top you have a bl uh, plunger on the uh, master cylinder on the brake and on the clutch. The wheels have all cylinders and you can use that same hone I think for the brake cylinders. You can go in there and clean them and uh, it's just cleaning it the same way. But if there's any rubber tour or cracked or anything like that, you must get a new one because like on a brake system or this with that pressure, any little groove or little wee hole or cut, it's not going to work. Believe me, it's going to bleed. And uh, so you buy new ones. If you have to buy this whole thing, you might. You might be able to get the rebuild kit. So that's what I'm up to. Then after that, I get all that back together. I'm going to put my carbs back in and all that stuff. Then I got to look at some other things on here deciding whether to get a, I have to open it up, I want to see about the timing belt, see how good it is. If it's not that great, uh, I'm trying to see, there is, I can't, that can't be right. Oh yeah, there's over 57,000 miles on it, 57. That isn't a high amount for these bikes, for this bike here especially, it's made to travel. So the bike belt might be all right, and like cars, I always go by 60,000 miles. I get a new belt put on, whether it needs it or not. This one, I might do the same. I might just, you know, while I'm in there, and then I'm going to set the valves and do that, and that's a process. It's a lot different than the ones I've been doing in the setup, and there's a guy on YouTube that has about putting these on, and he's really good. He explains it. He does the whole one side, and then you just do the other side the same. And one last thing on this, if you have this all apart like I do, down there the shaft comes out that goes through your clutch and that's what this pushes to put your clutch in to separate and leave the tension off the clutch plates so you can stop and just sit there and idle. You don't have your clutch on. When you release it then it, they, the springs let it squeeze and the clutch takes effect and then you can move the bike. But where that goes in, right to this rubber seal, it w probably wouldn't hurt to put a dot of grease on that. But I'm not sure in everything, and like I tell everybody that asks me stuff, go buy the book. I mean, go buy it, yeah, with money, but go buy what it says. The book is like your Bible on this bike. All of them are. I have a bike for, or a, yeah, a bike for every book I have. I have a book for every bike. And sometimes I'll want to see an exploded view while I'm working on it. So instead of having to get the book go through it, I'll just print out the page on the scanner in there, print it out, and put, bring it out, and put it right there, and I can see it. And then sometimes I'll get to where I'll get in there and read about it and make sure. But I'll see if they say anything about the grease on that little rod. Now it goes in through the clutch, so I'm, it might be getting oil from that inside, but just like right on a tip and the rubber seal here, this rubber seal is real good. I want to get a Q-tip and clean inside there yet, and the back side needs more wire brushing, and it's coming along great, but I mean that, now I can go out and I know that clutch, and there's nothing going to happen to it, because the top and bottom's both been done. And so I keep coming out here. I forgot my book. I got to take it in tonight. I'll read through that and see what it says. So now have a good day.